Morning, Saints. It is about 5 a.m. on Saturday, July 31st, 2021. I want to release a word that began to start coming to me last night as I was in the Open Heavens Conference where Ben and Jody Hughes were ministering an amazing service. Uh, but honestly, it was hard for me to keep my stay awake since I'm usually up at about 3 a.m. is when I begin awakening to the Lord. So as they were ministering, I was, I was also, as amazing as the service was, I was kind of nodding off and the Lord was releasing a revelation to me in that place. You know, during that service, we were singing a song about the beauty of the Lord. Um, I'm trying to remember how it goes now. I lost uh, the chorus, um, but we're out of Song of Solomon where it speaks of he who is more beautiful than thousands and thousands and thousands. And as we were singing this chorus, my heart was grieved because I know in the church, he is not yet held in that esteem. The beauty of thousands of thousands are, are, are beloved because the church is still enraptured with this world, is still caught up in the things of this world. And we can sing that song, but our daily lives demonstrate where our affections are. Do we really behold him as the fairest of 10,000? That our heart is on him alone. And so this revelation came out of that grieving during that time of worship. Psalm 50 says, The mighty God, the Lord, has spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God has shined. Unto Zion, the perfection of beauty, God has shined. This perfection of beauty is a people whose affections are wholly beholding the one. They are the perfection of beauty because Christ comes and inhabits that place. The King of glory comes and sits in that place, in Zion. See, Zion is the city of his face. A people who are enraptured in him. This perfection of beauty is what Lucifer was called. In Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel chapter 28 says that Lucifer was the anointed cherub. The anointed cherub that covereth. He covered the earth creation with glory. Because his affection, he was anointed with Christ. He was anointed with to praise the Lord. His affection was on the, the, on the Lord alone. And he covered the earth with glory. But yet, somehow his affection was turned. And he began to behold his own glory, which that really was Christ himself as the light of Christ was manifested from him. But yet, somehow, it became twisted. And iniquity was found in him. That iniquity is the antichrist spirit. Or, you know, that word antichrist really, <clears throat> in the Greek, is pseudo. Pseudo Christos. An another anointing. That antichrist, that 
another anointing is his spirit of pride. And that's the anointing that rests upon Lucifer now. This pride of the self-life. But yet, Lucifer, in the beginning, was the anointed cherub. He was anointed with the Spirit of Christ. And he covered the earth in his glory. And we were created. The ecclesia, the church, was created to fill that seat. To have our affections wholly turned upon the Lord. That we would fully manifest Christ to the earth. That we would become the perfection of beauty. You see, Psalm 50, the mighty God, the Lord, has spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun until the going down the same. What has he called the earth to? That comes out of Psalm 113. Psalm 113, which is the first chapter of the great Hallel, the great praise of Psalm 113 through Psalm 118, which was sung during Passover, where the lamb was slain for the blood, for the redemption. And of course, Christ fulfilled that in the shedding of his blood. So in Psalm 113, which is the first chapter of the great Hillel, was this edict. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, Psalm 113, the name of Yahweh is to be praised. The Lord is high. Yahweh is high above the nations. His glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God that dwelleth on high and who humbles himself? to behold the things in heaven, the things in the earth. It's this name that was glorified throughout the great Hillel. It's the name that was proclaimed to Moses when he said, show me your glory in Exodus chapter 33. In Exodus 34 verse 6, this name was proclaimed the Lord, Lord God, or Yahweh, Yahweh El, or I am, I am God, compassionate, gracious, long-suffering, abundant, and mercy, and truth. Having mercy unto thousands, forgiving iniquity, transgression, and sin. It is this name that is to be praised from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. This name of Yahweh, his name of love. And within this name is the key of the house of David, mercy and truth. For as Proverbs 16, 6 says, by mercy and truth, iniquity, the Antichrist spirit. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. The mighty God, the Lord, has spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, that we become this praise as Lucifer was created to praise the Lord and cover the earth with glory. He was anointed. We are now the anointed ones to cover the earth with the glory of Christ. We are to stand upon that rock you are the anointed one, the son of the living God. On this rock will I build my church. We are anointed with the spirit of Christ to cover the earth with glory. As he inhabits this praise. Zion, the perfection of beauty Psalm 48 says, Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion.
we become the beauties of holiness. We become the, the perfection of beauty when we behold the Lord and the beauties of holiness. When we set ourselves apart to behold him alone. Psalm 110 says, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. What is that until I make thine enemies thy footstool? That's when all nations bow at his feet, when he comes to inhabit Zion, when the king of glory comes in and inhabits a people who are wholly set apart to him, whose affections are on him alone. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at thy right hand until thine enemies are made thy footstool. The Lord, or Yahweh, shall send forth the scepter of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power, in the beauties of holiness. What is this beauties of holiness? It's in this place where we set ourselves apart to behold him alone. To behold the Christ within. To create a habitation for the King of Glory. You see, the seraphim are over this place. The seraphim of Isaiah chapter um, 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne. What is that throne that Isaiah saw? He saw the throne of glory in the people of God. He saw the king of glory come and fill Zion, fill the tabernacle of David, and cover the earth with this glory. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lifted up. This is in the hearts of his ecclesia. High and lifted up. And above it stood the seraphim, each having six wings. And with twain did they cover their feet, and with twain did they cover their face, and twain did they fly. And one cried to another, saying, Holy, holy, holy. And the sanctified ones, the ones who set themselves apart to behold him alone. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. The seraphim are like brooding over the remnant and the beauties of holiness, waiting, waiting for the bride to rise up. in the beauties of holiness. As our hearts are set apart to behold him alone, to worship him alone, to cover the earth with his glory. That all nations would flow to this light, to behold the light of Christ, which fills them. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until my, I make thine enemies thy footstool. That is fulfilled in Isaiah chapter 60. Where it says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. That's Christ arising upon the hearts of his pe- people that have beheld him in the beauties of holiness. They've set themselves apart to behold him alone. Yahweh shall send forth the scepter of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning where Christ is being birthed in them. 
and the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning. Thou hast the dew of thy youth. The Lord has sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. This is the perfection of beauty of people who have been inhabited by the King of glory. Psalm 24, lift up your heads, O ye gates. These gates of Zion are praise. Isaiah 68 verse 18 tells us that. Whose Zion's walls are salvation and her gates are praise. That we become the perfection of beauty just as Lucifer was the perfection of beauty. We were created to fill that seat at the throne of Christ. As it says in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 12, a glorious high throne from the beginning is the place of our sanctuary. As for Samuel chapter 2, verse 9, it says, I will set them with princes, the princes of my people, and they shall inherit the throne of glory. This is the perfection of beauty. The mighty God hath the Lord has spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God hath shined. Our God shall come and shall not keep silent. This is the King of glory coming in. A fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very tempestuous round about him. He shall call to the heavens above and to the earth, that he may judge his people. Gather my saints together unto me. That word saints is not the Hebrew word kadosh, sanctified ones, but it is hasid. It means merciful ones. Gather my merciful ones together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice, this living sacrifice. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies, the compassions that you offer your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world. Be transfigured, transformed, where Christ is transfigured into them. They became transfigured into the image of Christ as they behold him alone in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning. Gather my merciful ones together unto me. These are those that live in the power of the blood, who abide in Christ through the power of the blood, and they offer that blood to others, that mercy. They are the merciful ones. They are the ones who are going to be granted the right to judge the world in righteousness. See, this praise that is coming forth out of their lips is because of this mercy that they can abide before the throne. See, in Isaiah chapter 16, 5, it says, In mercy the throne is established. He shed his blood so that that throne could be established in us, that we become the praise of his glory, that we become the perfection of beauty, and we fill that seat that Lucifer vacated, that the seraphim are overshadowing until Christ is formed in the remnant. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God has shined. Our God shall come and shall not keep silent. A fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very tempestuous round about him. He shall call to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather my merciful ones together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice.
Where is he gathering them together unto him? To Zion. These are the 144,000 that stand upon Mount Zion in Revelation chapter 14. Who will follow the Lamb wherever he will go. And who will carry the everlasting gospel to all the nations. All nations shall flow to this perfection of beauty in Zion. In the book of, Acts, book of Acts, it says that heaven must receive him, Jesus, until the restitution, the restoration of all things. That restoration of all things, heaven receives him until, see that until is when he comes and inhabits Zion. And that begins the restoration, the restitution of all things things where Zion becomes the perfection of beauty and this is shown in Ephesians chapter 1 I'll finish here since I'm hitting my 20 minute mark I'm over 20 minutes so Ephesians chapter 1, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto sonship through Jesus Christ unto himself, according to to the good pleasure of his will, unto the praise of the glory of his grace. See, this is out of Zion, the perfection of beauty God has shined from the rising of the sun until the going down, the same the name of Yahweh is to be praised. Unto the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption, through his blood, the power of the blood, the merciful ones who abide there, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he has abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will. This Christ in you, the hope of glory, beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion. Through the power of the blood, the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one, gather my merciful ones together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ. Christ, both which are in heaven, which are in earth and him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, a glorious high throne from the beginning is the place of your sanctuary. I will set them with princes, the princes of my people, and they shall inherit the throne of glory, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of his own will. that we should be to the praise of his glory. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom you also, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, the anointing. The anointed. He, Lucifer was the anointed cherub that covereth. We are anointed with the Spirit of Christ, that we would become this praise unto the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. Unto the praise of his glory, 
in whom you also, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. What is this until the redemption of the purchased possession? This is the same as he shall sit upon that sit thou at my right hand until it's the same until. Sit thou at my right hand until the enemies are made his footstool. That is when the king of glory comes and inhabits this people, this remnant. And they receive the glorified body as the king of glory comes in. Isaiah 60 makes this very clear. And I will end here as I bring us to this place where all nations bow to him in this remnant people who become the perfection of beauty. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the nations shall come to thy light, coming to Zion, the perfection of beauty. And the nations shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about thee, and see. They gather themselves together. They come unto thee. Thy sons come from far, and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Those becoming born again as they come to the light of Christ. Then thou shalt see and be enlightened, and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged. Because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee, the forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. The multitude of camels shall cover thee, the dromedaries of Midian and Ephah. All they of Sheba shall come with their gold and their incense. And they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Nebaioth shall minister unto thee. And they shall come up with acceptance on mine altar. And I will glorify the house of my glory. Who are these that fly as a cloud? See, these are what Paul speaks of. Caught up together with the Lord in the clouds. So shall they ever be with the Lord. This is gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Who are these that fly as a cloud and as the doves to their window, carrying the everlasting gospel of peace? Surely the isles shall wait for me, the ships of Tarshish first, to bring thy sons from far, the gold and their silver with them, unto the name of the Lord thy God and to the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. And the sons of the stranger shall build up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor I have had compassion on thee. Therefore thy gates shall be open continually, these praises, to bring all nations to this light, the perfection of beauty. Therefore thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night that men may bring unto you the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. For that nation and kingdom which shall not serve you shall perish, yea, that nation shall be utterly wasted. And the sons of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto they, thee, and they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of your feet. They're coming and bending. Sit thou at my right hand until I make mine enemies my footstool. They that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of your feet, and they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Shalom, shalom.